So before we were talking about how we sort of got such the golf ball, if we look at the left hand one here now, it kind of involves sort of like the feet, the grip and the club, all kind of sort of just makeshifting and trying to find some sort of position, sort of rocking back and forth, rocking side to side, moving the club, not trying to get your grip right, still moving your grip, still changing your feet, moving the club around, eight, nine, ten seconds of movement and we weren't really getting probably comfortable, okay? The order of play, when I put the club down next to the ball, we know the golf club pretty much goes behind the golf ball. It doesn't sort of go back here or over there. It starts behind the golf ball. We get that correct. Then we're going to put the grip second. So your feet would be closer together if we could, or close together. Get that left hand on the club, as we can see. So the left hand and the right hand are a bit more on top. Left wrist, we can see more covering the grip there. Okay, this one you can see, even there a bit. Left hand's a bit more round and under. That little V that we talked about your thumb makes going up there, that one now going more towards your chin. Could do with being a little bit over, but that for me is okay. We can prove we can square the club face up with that grip. So that for me is fine for you. And that feels comfortable. We'll stick with that, okay? So from there, once you've got the grip, then you set your feet up and get yourself in the position you want to, okay? So that took nine seconds of just dump, dump, dump. This took pretty much eight and a half seconds of, oh, where am I? And not really knowing are you in the right position or not. The other thing we said about setup, just make sure your feet are the right width. If they get too wide, you'll find it very difficult to sort of shift and move your body, okay? This left hand swing now, we'll see as you come in the golf ball, a distinct sort of leaning back to try and hit it up in the air. Head standing a long time, and there's a lot of weight now for the majority of your body is up on that back foot. Kind of lean back under it. This one here now, we'll see as we swing. Same good back swing. As we swing the golf club now, we're staying more on top of the ball. So that club, as we can see, is coming down into the golf ball on a slightly sort of what we call descending or downward flow, striking the ball there. That ball now sailing away. And you can see at this point here now, your centre of your body is pretty much on top of the golf ball. So therefore, we get a reasonable shot. And as we then twist through, you can see now those two inches take all the lines away. How one now is a little bit more sort of centred. This one definitely looks leaning back, supporting the majority of your weight onto that back foot, okay? So because of that movement there, now that will encourage a lot of, sort of top shots, shots that sort of shoot off to the left or the right. And if you do get a reasonable contact, being on your back foot, you'll find a lot of shots will go left anyway, because you're basically pulling it off this back foot, like a hook shot and click it. All the shots on the back foot will go left, okay? So by getting more on top of the golf ball, we can see now as we swing the golf club, you're not really moving or shifting off the ball. Whereas this one, we can see as you go back, there's a distinct movement, you've got to put a line uh, there through your head as you swing back you can see when you come back to the golf ball now you're behind that blue line trying to get up in the air kind of thing without any lift in the golf swing if everything lifts hands arms club knees feet shoulders hips and toes or whatever everything goes up but the golf ball because the ball can't move okay so if you're rising the club up hitting up on the ball with sort of an ascending blow you're going to get a top shot the problem then is you see a ball scuttle on the ground and you go i want the ball up in the air I'll try and get under it and that's the worst thing you can try and do so staying on top of the ball getting more of a sort of descending blow with the body and the arms coming down lovely strike and swing through but be disciplined with that setup don't be afraid to start with it takes eight nine ten seconds just to get yourself set up the more you do that routine the quicker you will get at doing it and it'll be more effective than just sort of doing the same time sort of shuffling around kind of where's kind of best fit sort of thing not knowing where you're at sort of thing so if we can get into a better position go through that routine once it's been done 50 times it sounds a lot but one session on the drive now that'd be 50 golf balls you can do it every single time even if daft it may sound do it at home without even hitting a golf ball just put something down there just hold it no a frying pan or a ruler or something with a handle you can hold on to or whatever Hold it there, go through the sequence and set up and get yourself set up in the same position, okay? So you actually get used to setting up. The same as a learner driver gets in the car. They'll take 10, 15, 20 seconds to get that car in motion. Mirrors, seat belt, handbrakes on, clutches down in, in the ignition is in neutral. All those things that you and I would do now in split seconds. You get in your car now, do you think about whether it's in gear? Or you just do it, then you? Don't think, oh, is car in gear? Is my handbrake on? Is the fit? It's just done automatically. But because you've been taught that routine and that method from day dot you've learned it from that way so if we can learn that in golf and that's with all the shots whether you're doing a four foot putt or a tee shot off the tee or a second shot or a shot over water or anything 
same routine will apply. Okay, make sense? Yeah.